what we do in the everyday I run up a shop called Marcula & Co. We're a strategy and ideas lab. So the strategy part does business and brand strategy and ideas is about futures design. We scare people when we say futures design. They go, what do you mean? Do you tell fortunes? I'm like, no, we help you think about solving for things that haven't really uh, been presented. But this is me. So in the beginning there was this cutie who loved the bottle and she gave it up at three, which was way too late, I'm told. And then I grew up into this cutie who still loves a bottle of a different kind. <laughs> and I felt so comfortable in this environment because creatives and bottles together, we are one, right? right? Um, I was asked to come and speak today about community. And I, and I was trying to think, what does community mean? Because oftentimes when we're at work, you hear people say, our, our agency is so tight, we are like family. I don't know about you, but our family gossips, and there's an uncle with bad breath and an aunt who wears skirts that are too short and we never tell her the truth. So I don't know about saying workplaces are about family. I think workplaces are about community, and community is about finding people who are aligned to the things that drive you, the passions that wake you up in the morning, but also a sense of purpose, sense of shared purpose. So today I'll talk to you a little bit about um, what I think makes or breaks community and the things that we leave unsaid and how those things get in the way of just us relating authentically. Um, I did say that community is made up of individuals, but it starts with one person at a time. Um, there's a slide I like that encourages people to accept the tulip you are. But how many times do we spend our lives trying to fit in when we were born to stand out, right? So if you're that red chair in the stadium, just rock your redness, except there's a caveat. I've heard people say, I'm being true to myself. You can be true to yourself and not be an asshole, right? Like you can be true to yourself and be a nice person. So there's no, there's no excuse. You can't say, I'm being true to myself and being hurtful. That's not nice. But I am such suggesting that you embrace your uniqueness because part of what makes us magical as a creative community is the ability to contribute the ways in which we are unique. Note I didn't say different, because different makes us compare, right? Because then you're shorter and I'm taller, no hair, with hair, your hair grows faster than mine, mine takes forever, then it gets untidy, right? And I don't see into your heart, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but in suggesting that community is made up of individuals also means that each individual has has to come into the community with a sense of purpose. And you may have heard it now because it's a new fashionable thing, like even brands have purpose, right? Uh, human beings have purpose. For me, purpose isn't the stuff they write on your, on your graveyard. Is it graveyard or grave? Tombstone. How do I know I'm going to get cremated? Don't judge me. I just know where my ashes will be sprinkled. This is all I know. But the point is, if we are to come together as a community, then we have to be a lot clearer about what our purpose is. So for me, I landed on purpose at the age of 30, which is when you should, right? When your long-term boyfriend proposes, you think, what's my purpose? To marry you? Nah, that wasn't it. But purpose for me isn't just the, the thing that you do when it's comfortable for you to do something. It's also not the thing you do because it's trendy to do it. Purpose for me is the part of you that you would, or the thing that you would do even if you weren't paid for. The ways in which the world you, would be different if you weren't alive. So for me, I finally landed on this thing called influence. And let's explain the difference between influence and impact. Impact for me is the point where the pebble lands on the water. And influence are those concentric circles that form around it. So my purpose then is about positive influence. It helps me choose people, jobs, communities. It also helps me depart people, jobs, and communities. So my challenge to you, whether it's your next birthday or the next time you have a quiet moment on your own, just think deeply about what your purpose is. And I suggest it's a word. It's not a paragraph. If it's a paragraph, then you're just trying to write bad copy. Give it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, really would love to challenge you to just think deeply about what your purpose is and how you're going to use it to infuse whatever magic you can in your everyday environment that is creative. 
Here's what I believe. I believe that when women and men who are purpose-led lead, humanity makes audacious jumps. Right? We overcome those parts of ourselves that are ugly and mean and unkind. But also we start moving the world forward because we start movements, right? We sustain movements, whether that is uh, fees must fall or Black Lives Matter or lefties are lefties rock. Who else is left-handed? Don't leave me alone. Yay, lefties rock, lefties rock. Even they are important. How amazing is that? Um, so, so communities of, therefore is about one individual who has a clear purpose, who comes together with other people who are equally purposeful to move humanity forward. Here's a quote I like about accepting the tulip you are, because we spend too much time trying to be can you guys stop? I know this is great, but sorry. Um, I think we spend too much time comparing instead of investing time in becoming. Right? So your work community may be different from the next guys. It's fine. It's okay. It's like saying visiting a happily married couple. You know those happily married couples where the husband changes the baby's nappy and you go home. You're like, even Sam changes the baby's nappy. You don't know what else he doesn't do. So leave them alone. Right? Just cultivate and enjoy the joy that you you have. So I wanted to walk us very quickly through this quote which I thought was a wonderful way of just talking about community and I highlighted the bits that I want to focus on. So the first one is about the coming together of individuals. So I'm suggesting that the ways in which you are unique, wear those, embrace those, share those, right? If you're mad, if you wear clothes that don't fit like me, do that. It's fine. It's you. Um, but also it's about communicating honestly with each other. And this is the tricky part, which is why I was dismissive of workplaces become family because families don't communicate honestly with each other. They really don't. But communicating honestly with each other is about speaking in complete sentences. It's also about asking those questions that you think would make you look dumb, which is what you're going to do at this moment. So you're going to look to the person next to you who is hopefully unique from you and ask them the one question you think would make you seem dumb if you asked it out loud. So I'll give you an example. So you could turn to him and say, is it true that people who wear glasses have high IQs? And he goes, yeah, it's not true or whatever. So you have two minutes to figure a question and ask the person next to you. Come, get to it. I know you want to ask each other questions. Come! The extent to which we don't speak about those things that we think make us uncomfortable, when when we are caught in a traffic light, right, then you become a cow, not a human being, right? And this is what I'm trying to get us to do, that if we really want to build a community, we have to be okay with our own prejudices. And when we share those, we create an opportunity for learning. So it's not racist to talk about race. It's racist to be judgmental about race. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, okay, good. So that's that's what I meant. Okay. Um, going deeper than these masks of composure. So here's what happens. In community, we have no time to fake it. Because you're not going to make it if you're going to fake it. I know there was a phrase about fake it till you make it. That doesn't work. There was an ad, which was popular a couple of years ago, about a guy who rocks up to a bar and says he wants his martini, shaken, not stirred, with ice on the side, but no, no but no, no, with no ice, but with the rocks. Ah, uh, Baba Wenzan, you're like, what are you doing? If you don't know, it's okay not to know. Actually, when you say you don't know, you create room to learn new stuff. And for anybody who judges you for not knowing, they are the poopers. Oh, sorry, bad word. Beep. <laughs> If we truly are about creating community, then we have to speak honestly with each other, right? But also, here's what else this means. It means that when you don't understand my creative idea, don't dismiss it because it sounds foreign. Lean into it. Ask me to explain what I mean, because humor is cultural. So just because you don't get it doesn't mean it's not funny. So the next time you look at something that looks, oh, that's kind of odd, don't label it as uncreative. Lean into it and challenge yourself to understand other people's lived experiences. Um, this part about significant commitment means you and I, if we are on a boat, the person you're worried about is me, and the person I'm worried about is you. That's what commitment is. Commitment isn't the person I'm worried about is me, and the person you must worry about is me. 
because there's two people are worried about like one person. But here's what else this is. I often use the example of a, a bacon and egg breakfast. That the chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. Right. So in your own work life, you have to decide whether you're the pig or you're the chicken. And if you're working with people who are chickens, it's going to be really hard to try and turn them into pigs. So figure out very quickly whether you are aligned in terms of energy, but also whether you're aligned in terms of just the depth of your commitment. Because commitment isn't the bits we do when it's convenient. Commitment is the bits we do when it is inconvenient, right? It's pushing the trolley back when no one's watching. It's driving around nine times and missing the parking for disabled people because that's not the that's that's the right thing. Do you know what I mean? Letting an old lady cross the road, that kind of stuff, and yelling at the lady with the lipstick, saying your babies are not fastened into their seat. That's being part of a community. In terms of rejo rejoicing together, it's. It's important that we understand that when I give you praise, I'm not diminishing my own light. How many times have you withheld praise? Because your mother said, if I give you too much praise, you're gonna get a big head. That's not my mother, Lena. That's not, at least in Susutu, that's what you're gonna have a big head. I didn't understand the relation between praise and big head, but I guess she meant I develop an ego. But here's what happens. Praise does for people what water does for plants. So give it, give it. And it doesn't diminish your own light. It just makes you a fantastic human being because it takes confidence to share praise. It's insecurity that makes you withhold affection. So this idea of rejoicing together is part of what I'm challenging us to do as a creative community. So when and another ad agency does something fantastic, like I saw some work from Nando's yesterday. They were taking a piss at some other people. I wasn't laughing at the piss, I was laughing at the work, so I thought that was fantastic. But we also have to be able to mourn together. Mourning together means reflecting on the things that we've lost. I think as a community, we have lost honesty. I also think we've also lost tenacity. We have become incredibly addicted to quick wins because a million likes means I'm creative and I'm talented. Because that's what gets us to cheat, right? We cut corners trying to get to the last. And that is what, for me, is the saddest moment of reflection, is that we have lost the idea and the and the reason, at least the reason why I joined this mad community was to create work that was helpful, work that was authentic, but also work that was distinctive. So when I see a body of work that reminds me of someone else, you've been lazy. You know what I mean? Like, it's like seeing a Puma ad that reminds you of a Nike ad. You might as well have just said to the Puma, my clients spend more money in support of Nike. And that's what I think we also have, are being challenged to reflect on. What have we lost in our pursuit of things that are superficial? So every time that we are dishonest, we affect our own trust, which means clients then turn around and say, you creators are lazy, why must I pay you this much? Huh? Why do you claim it's gonna take you six weeks when my when my nephew who goes to Vega can give me a logo in two minutes? Ooh. Why must I pay for social media when my daughter just put me on the Twitter rings? Like, how, are you, how are we going to ask for our true value when we erode it on our own? So this idea of keeping each other honest means every time we set ourselves up for failure, we've got to be able to correct each other. Then the other one was about making others' conditions our own. And this isn't like hugging bears and being softy and kissing children because I don't do that. I pinch children. No, don't judge. There's a condition. I pinch children when there are marshmallows and watermelon involved. That's the only time. Because parents, I don't, like I don't understand how you know I love marshmallows and you ask me to share with your child. How's that going to end? Not nicely for your child. I'm just telling you. But it's, it's not. It's not. It's, 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 it, I'm telling you now. It's not going to end nicely. So let's not go there, right? But this idea of making others condition our own means leaning into the things that we don't understand and developing a level of compassion that goes beyond our obsession with awards and walking up to the stage at the Louis or the yellow pants and those DNA that the Kali likes a lot. The point of it is we've got to be able to 
create work with heart because that's the sort of work that lasts. We've got to be able to create work that reflects on our own privilege and we don't impose it, but we understand the ways in which that my, the fact that I can wake up in a house that has running water is a privilege, it's a gift. I therefore can't assume that everyone must arrive smelling like me because that may not be their reality. So this idea of making other people's condition our own means developing a compassion and looking in the mirror each time to reflect on our own biases. Because I have my own. I really do. I, I am impatient with people that I think take their own time to, excuse me, figuring out what needs to work. I'm impatient with people that I, I think are not making an effort to learn and to unlearn some stuff. So using this quote for me was just a, I thought it would be a, a nice roadmap to just go, what for me is community? And in your everyday lives, what do you believe is your contribution to the community in which you earn a living, you create work, you live in the everyday, and you move in and out of. In, 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 I guess, in summary, community is nothing without individuals, but individuals who aren't true or authentic to themselves, as a consequence, then can't create communities that are authentic. Huh? Um, here's what I know, is that communities start and sustain movements, but it's no longer about finding people who are like-minded, it's about finding people who are like-purposed, because purpose lasts a lot longer than the mind, because the mind is a dodgy thing to follow. The mind will tell you you're fabulous, even when you're not, because that's just how minds work. Here's my newest favorite community. Um, this is a, a, a term I coined, it's called entrepreneurs, which is just entrepreneur with an F, it makes you sound so French, because in my past life I was French, I promise, I really was. Um, and then I was born with no budget, and that was the end of my French dream. <laughs> but entrepreneur for me is a female entrepreneur, but she's badass, right? So she's ambitious, she's, she's generous, she's kind, she's hardworking, she's resilient, she's resourceful, she's all these fantastic things. And I'm suggesting that this community, particularly in our creative circle, could present another source of growth. Because if we understand the way in which creative entrepreneurs think, process, contribute, and create, and we make space for them in our everyday lives, we not only do that diversity thing, but we do that thing called inclusivity. Because diversity is different shapes and colors. Inclusivity is different shapes and colors, but I want to hear your voice. So that for me is the stuff that keeps me up at night and I'm super excited about this bit. Um, but in the end of it, as we grow and our communities evolve and as we evolve as human beings, I'm suggesting that we should be okay with learning, with unlearning and relearning. And you can go home and figure out what are the things you want to learn. I'd like to finesse my French. I also would like to learn how to be comfortable with money. I'm, I have a bad relationship relationship with money, I see it, I spend it. It's like my cousin. She's on a seafood diet, she sees food, she eats it. Um, and learn is the things that hold you back. What no longer serves you? What is a self-limiting belief that no longer serves you? Is it possible that you think you're not creative enough, so you never show your proactive ideas? Is it possible that you think because someone turned down your idea last week, they won't appreciate the idea you're presenting this week? Is it possible that you think because you're the junior in the team, you don't have a smart idea. I'm here to tell you that those things that are bubbling inside you are your gift to the world. Share them. Those who don't get them, leave them alone. But those who do may very well just help you grow, right? And then things to relearn, like manners, like thank you, please, and proper apologies. Someone apologized to me the other day, but this is what they said. They said, um, hi, I think you, I get the sense that you're mad at me, but that's not what I meant, so I'm sorry that you took offense. I'm like, no, but that's not an apology, because you're still making it about me, like I'm the one who took offense, so actually, no, here's an apology, an apology is, I'm sorry that what I said caused you harm, period, end of story, let's leave it alone, let's have some trial, I did tell you about the book, don't judge, but that for me is how we resolve things. Uh, the thing with frogs. 
the frogs are those ugly things that we have to do, right? Maybe the, the piece of work you've got to dump because you've been sitting on this cup. Because here's what happens. When an idea isn't good, you can't buff it, right? Into great. If it's not good, it's just not good. Leave it alone. Turn the page and go to something else. But frogs are all the difficult things that we have to deal with. And here's the thing with frogs. The longer you look at it, the uglier it becomes. Right? So you might as well just swallow it. So whatever it is, whether it's a difficult conversation you need to have about, I don't feel that I'm getting my 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 fair pay, not because Nkabi is getting more, but because I'm contributing and I know what I'm, what value I'm adding. Um, I don't feel respected by you in the meeting when you interrupt me midstream, right? I don't feel comfortable when you say sexist things like men, white men can't jump. Whatever the frog is, I'm challenging you today, find it, swallow it, and give it back. Because it's not yours, it's like a monkey. If it's on your back, give it back to that person it is. I'm not suggesting that it's easy, because you're going to need courage to frog up, right, to the person who's your supervisor, and you're going to need compassion to frog down to the person you think is your peer or somebody who works on your team. But I truly think that this is my last slide, because the next one should be a thank you. In which, what communities are you part of at the moment that help you in your business? So I'm part of the Fintopreneur community yeah. which is fantastic which all these other fantastic women who come and do these wonderful things with me I'm also part of a community called the divas some of them are in the room because I get asked often to be a mentor to somebody I'm like I've got such limited bandwidth but I now have 10 and then we get together and we do some other stuff I'm also part of the Virgin Atlantic Ellis Lane community okay yes because I go there at 4 30 in the morning because I can wear whatever the ish I want and get my work done yeah. and I'm also part Part of this community, the community of mad people yeah. who do wonderful things. Thank you. I'm obsessed with you. Um, and the reason I am is you've always been that person who's been brave to step out of what's been, especially within African communities, of what is, is expected of a woman. And you found your own path. You weren't, for instance, the, the obvious creative in terms of being maybe a jazz musician or an actress or, you know, you found your own path within the creative sphere. How did you find that one word in terms of saying, I'm an influencer? Because I know a lot of people are still struggling with it. It takes you, some people are 30, 40, 50, and you literally say, I've got five things that I really love. How do you really know this is it? And how can that it become a career or a pathway? Okay. So I, I, I didn't wake up and understand that my word would be influenced, right? In my 30s, I had to reflect on my collective body of work. I'd had an opportunity to work as South Africa's first black owned and black manager at agency. I'd had an opportunity to work with clients who were incredibly unkind. Like I had a, um, a white gentleman once walk into the office and say, um, she, he wants to see the boss. When I walked out, he looked at me and he yelled at the receptionist and he said, I said I want to see the boss. So I've had opportunity to deal with prejudice, I've had opportunity to deal with people who walk into a boardroom and I make them tea because there's tea to be made in your guests. And when we sit down and I introduce myself as the deputy MD, the first question is, so why did you make the tea? So I've had occasion to deal with people whose prejudice was visited upon me. And my reaction in those instances is part of this muscle I grew over time. And I knew that if I wasn't doing this thing, which is disrupting people's understanding of what the consumer who's black looks like, dreams of, and hopes for, then I wouldn't have done a good job of living my life. So for me, it was just about saying, how do I make the world see my people the way I know them? How do I make the world celebrate my people the way I know and love them? And that is how I settled on the path. And that's and that's what's been helpful for me. Are you answered? Um, thanks very much for the talk. It's, uh, it was very inspiring. Um, I just wanted to know how you make choices about uh, which communities you're going to work with and um, I'm sure there must be resistance to new ideas at which point do you say look this isn't going to work um, or like I'm going to make this work like recruit people onto your idea or not how do you like, what do you look forward to see like mm, I can just see this as uh, irreconcilable or, or this is just resistance and you know like you know where do you draw the line with like your enthusiasm to make something work and like 
how much other people are coming to the party. Fantastic. I understand your question. Um, so let's give you an example of a, of a client who, who said to us, um, I've just come out of curatorship of a financial services brand and I want you to help me reframe my new positioning in the new era. Um, and the first thing I said to them is, what are the things that made you unique in the past? They went X, Y, Z, and then, and then, and then, and then I said, but those things are no longer helpful because your future requires you to behave differently. Right. So for me, a decision point is when you ask me to help and you receive my help. You ask me to help and you don't second guess me. Because if you're second guessing me, then it means one of two things. One, you are not ready for my help, or two, you are insulting my intelligence. Either way, there are other people who could benefit from my joy and my talent. I leave you, I wish you well, I snog you if you're good looking, I'm kidding. But I, I really do, I just, I wish you well and I leave. Because here's what happens. When you spend time trying to convince people, you start to doubt your own gift. And, and that's never okay. I, I don't have to convince you, I have to bring you along on the journey. If you see what I see, which is, I am going to apply my creative talent to solve this thing that's keeping you up at night, then happiness. But if you don't see it, I'll thank you for having considered me, and I'll wish you up. But here's what I do. When I leave, I don't bang the door. I wish you continued success. Because here's what happens when you leave with good manners. Is that when he or she finally understands what you were trying to teach them nine years ago, they're going to come calling back. At which point, don't say, yeah, 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 yeah. Just double your buildings and keep it moving. <laughs> okay, so the question is, what was I doing in my 20s? Uh, in my 20s, I met a good-looking guy. He's the first guy I snogged who also became my first husband. Um, so I didn't go partying, I didn't go clubbing, I didn't jump out windows. I mean, he was very serious, he spoke big words. So very quickly I had to learn big words. Yeah, yeah, I was very tidy, yeah, I put a lot together. But also in my 20s I was plotting. I was reading a lot. I, 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 I was presented with feminist writing. So the first book I read was a book called My Mother, Myself, because my mother and I have always had a, a relationship with wrinkles. This is what happens when both of you are passionate. Um, and understanding her and the bits of me that frustrate me about her are actually the same bits that I've got. I mean, hello. So that, and then being introduced to the work of Maya Angelou and Bell Hooks. So I spent my early 20s just finding a voice and being okay with the term feminist because I understood it as it's supposed to be understood, which is not anti-man, but pro-women in a way that is without shame. Um, what I'm about to say is not really a question, it's more of an observation, um, that you are applying the principles of self-actualization to branding and advertising, or creativity, rather. Um, like, when you spoke about uh, finding purpose and um, just having a clear understanding of what you want to do, these are things that I've um, observed in my journey of self-actualization, um, and they and you making them apply to creativity. So, yeah, there you go. Thank you. I, I, and I, you know what it is? It's because I, I didn't study, so let's be clear, I didn't go to creative schools, I didn't go to Vega, I didn't go to the AAA. I'm a sociologist. And, what, and studying sociology for me was about understanding how communities connect. And then applying it to advertising was about understanding how we attach value to brands and therefore how then can I apply. So I did come at creativity from the left field. And I always say to people, if, you are, if your daughters or sons are confused about what to study, please encourage them to do either the liberal sciences, either sociology, psychology, or, or anthropology or philosophy, and then they can do economics and whatever other funky things you think they, they want to do. But for me, understanding liberal, uh, understanding humanity enriched my ability to connect. Because I don't create for consumers, I create for humans. Because we're humans all of the time, and we're consumers some of the time. Right? How do you foster a culture of trust? because I think I spend a lot of time in creative communities and we all share like similar purpose and we all have fantastic ideas but there's this like hiding and hugging of idea culture um, which isn't moving
moving us forward. Like we're all fabulous, we all have wonderful ideas and we're not collaborating. And you go to other cities in the world, Berlin, wherever else, and people just collaborate. Like, oh, how did this project start? Oh, we met at a coffee shop and we just did it. And like nobody said, oh, it's my idea, I'm not telling anyone. And there, there are several things at play here. So one is this, the, the scarcity mentality, right? And it applies either to us as black people, because we didn't have enough, so when I get to the buffet, I take everything and I and the, and the squad sits on top of the custard and the jelly oil at the same time, right? Because you don't know whether there'll be enough when you go back. So that's the one thing, the, which is a historical thing. The second one is the scarcity in this creative sector, because we still aren't transformed. We, there still aren't enough of people who look like me, or people who sound like me, or people who are just crazy enough to say the shit that I say and not worry too much because we're not causing offense. But here's what happens with trust. You have to give it. You have, when you give it, you pass the responsibility on to me to earn it and live up to it. And I think maybe we get it wrong because we think you must earn my trust. No, I give it to you. Because when you let me down, you're going to feel like ish. So the cousin who doesn't pay me back, she doesn't come to weddings now. Because she knows, she knows. She, but I gave her. So I'm suggesting that we give. The second one, I also, I'm suggesting that the world gets smaller when smart, compassionate people collaborate. Because I can't lift a boulder on my own. And I should stop trying. 